All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're back on my ASUS Store Lockster 4, which ASUS Store sent me, and we're actually gonna be going over one of its most compelling features over its competitor with Synology, which is the DS920 Plus. And that's the fact that out of the box, it comes with 2.5 gigabit networking instead of one gigabit networking. So 2.5 and 5 gigabit networking has actually come on the market fairly recently. So a lot of switches won't even support it, even if they're 10 gig switches. But those who do tend to be very low power draw, and it's a lot easier to get in devices for a price point. And even some laptops and desktops are starting to come with it built in, rather than going all the way for 10 gig, which 10 gig is still not fully on the market because of the amount of noise reduction that has to be done for the signal to work. It is just so much data all crammed onto one Cat6 cable, and so it tends to be very hot and very power inefficient. But 2.5 and 5 gig is very efficient and a lot lower cost comparatively. And so having 2.5 gigabit ports over a 1 gigabit port is so nice to have because it basically increases your total network bandwidth by two and a half times, which is a huge thing. Realistically, for most people, 2.5 gigabit is a great starting place because in my experience with video editing, honestly, I very rarely go over that amount of bandwidth when I'm going through a timeline. Obviously, when I've got a ton of stuff going on, I've gotten up to 300 megabytes per second, which is above that cap. But overall, it's a pretty usable and theoretically could give us about 270 megabytes per second transfer rate, which is really nice to have and it can make file transfers happen so much faster. So we're gonna go ahead and test it out on this, and I am planning on doing a future video basically comparing the Lockstore 4 and its comparable Synology DS920 Plus to see what options you've got and what is the right choice for you depending on what you're looking for. And so as I said in the beginning of this video, it's actually a hit or miss whether or not your Switch will support 2.5 and 5 gigabit, even if it sports 10 gigabit. Luckily, my Netgear Switch does, it's that one with two 10 gigabit ports and eight gigabit ports, and it does support 2.5 gigabit. So I'm able to use that to then basically upscale it to 10 gig in a way to send it to my main switch, which then goes into my desktop. And so that's overall the setup for this video. It's not too complex, but that is the setup. And so I did want to mention one other thing before we set this up is I was unable to get jumbo frames to work with a performance increase. I've used jumbo frames on this exact configuration before on my Synology devices, and I've gotten much better performance. But when I changed the MTU to 9,000, and I also tried 8,000 and 7,000, I was unable to get any kind of performance increase. And actually MTU 9,000 actually gave me a stark performance decrease. I'm not sure what happened. I don't think it could be packet segmentation due to the fact that I checked every single one of my devices in the line to make sure it was jumbo frame compatible, and I have used jumbo frames in this exact configuration before, but that is just one thing I wanted to note before starting this test, is I was unable to use jumbo frames for this, and so this is just using the standard MTU of 1500. All right, and so now we can go ahead and check out the setup, and so if we go into network, network interface, we'll see that I'm connected at 2.5 gigabit which is a big step up from gigabit because it can give you a lot more theoretical performance. The disks I'm using right now, I've just got three in a RAID 5 array, but that should be easily enough to saturate 2.5 gigabit. I'm not worried about that at all. I'm gonna connect using SMB and it's going to have signing disabled as well as forcing the SMB3 protocol for the maximum possible performance. And we're gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm on my Mac, which is 10 gig. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and click Command K and connect to the server. And so we'll just go ahead and do a black magic speed test. And I'll go ahead and select it and we'll run it. And just like that, we're not getting the total maximum value possible out of this NAS. We are getting a lot better than one gigabit, but here, see with the read speeds, you are getting that. I don't think it's actually a disk issue. I believe it might actually be a RAID issue. RAID 5 does actually take up a fair amount of math to complete. And so the CPU actually might be having trouble completing that transaction quickly enough to really saturate the thing. And so you can see it does have a pretty high CPU usage considering how this is not really doing that much. It shouldn't be this high with the transfer. It's not got the best CPU in here and these are not encrypted shares. So I'm wondering if it is that RAID parity math causing a bit of a slowdown because I'm not sure how multi-threaded that operation is using MDADM. 
But overall, I mean, we're getting much better than gigabit performance. And in my experience, generally read speeds are what matters. And so we are pretty close to saturating those read speeds, at least at first. I probably could get some performance once I throw in that fourth drive to get better performance on this. But overall, it is so much better than a one gigabit connection, about, eh, not two and a half, probably two times faster than a one gigabit connection that's going perfectly fast. And that really matters. That is twice the performance out of it. And that's what I really would like to see more companies throwing on these NASs because it is pretty cheap overall. It's not the massive price and power increase that takes with 10 gig and a lot of switches and consumer products are now really supporting that 2.5 and 5 gigabit connection. And so I would love to see more companies adding it in there. So for those of you who don't know, a one gigabit connection at most will give you about mm, 120, maybe 125 if everything's perfect on a connection. And so this is twice that, which it makes a huge difference with the bottleneck of transferring. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this video. I know it was short, but that's the speed test. And 2.5 networking has a great place in the market. I'm excited to see more and more devices support it out of the box. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this video. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.